In this video, we're going to take a look at what it takes to create combinations inside Java. Let's start by running this piece of code here and seeing what the output looks like. Here we see we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in our original set and we're asking the code to pick three of these out of this set and we see all the different uh, combinations are listed here. Because in combinations order does not matter, you can see that the numbers 1, 2, and 3 only appear once in this list. In other words, we wouldn't expect to see 1, 3, 2 on this list because that would be the same as this first one, 1, 2, 3. If order matters, we would need a permutation. That's covered in a separate video. Now, you can see that the code that's needed to generate a combination in Java is fairly short. You can find all kinds of examples on the internet. I found this particular algorithm for, from a place called Tutorial Horizon. And the reason I like this particular one is that it's fairly terse. It's a little hard to understand, though, because as is typically the case for generating permutations and combinations, the resulting code is recursive. You can see that this uh, method subset is called from inside of itself. And what makes the code even more difficult to understand is that not only is it recursive, it is not tail recursive, as you can see that there are multiple calls of subset inside here. The general algorithm, though, uh, is worth going over. And what's happening here is that we are creating a Boolean array, uh, which is called used in this particular example. And the Boolean array has the same length or the number of data elements as our original data. And what we're doing is we are calling the algorithm with each element selected. And, and once again, we're calling it with each element not selected. And so that's the trick that we use to make sure that we get every single combination listed in the final output. Uh, here uh, is the place where we actually print the resulting combinations. And you can see that the elements are only printed if the corresponding used variable in the Boolean array, uh, which is a parallel array, happens to be uh, set to true. Even if you have trouble understanding exactly how this code works, the code is simple enough and short enough that you should be able to cut and paste it for your different applications where combinations are required uh, in a Java environment. One subtlety to this algorithm I want to mention is this current length variable, and this is what keeps track of how many elements in the array are currently set to true. So for example, if we're looking to pick three elements, uh, we're only concerned with the case where three of the Boolean elements here are have been set to true and are therefore going to be part of our solution. Uh, you can see that in the case where we turn on one of the flags, we're going to increase the current length variable, whereas if the particular element we're looking for is not being used, we leave the current length where it is. The one other thing I want to show you before we leave this tutorial is that even though this particular example uses integers, we can uh, use the same code for uh, other types of objects uh, such as strings. Uh, let me show you what would need to change here. For example, if we wanted to uh, create combinations of strings, I would change that here, here. And now let's replace this with some strings. I've replaced all the data elements with this, these strings, and I've rerun the program now. And you can see that the program works just as well uh, creating combinations of strings as it did uh, with integers. If we wanted to print these strings all as a single string, then instead of uh, printing the data like this, we would use a concatenation operator to create a single string. We'll leave that to you.